Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, High Priest, and welcome to War Thunder. Uh, this is going to be a new series of videos that are starting on my channel, as of now, obviously. Uh, but before I get into War Thunder, as I'm sure you've noticed, I have a superb new intro and my sincere thanks to my good friend Eggy for putting that together for me. Uh, if you don't know who Eggy is, she's a, a fellow gamer that I've known for quite a few years now. Uh, I'd highly recommend you go check out his YouTube channel for plenty of other good gaming videos. The link to that will be in the description below. But that said, let's get on to the game. Now I've only been playing for about a week or two and as you can probably see from my hangar my main focus has really been on my British planes done a little bit of work on the American and the German trees. I'm not particularly too bothered about the Russian or the Japanese. <clears throat> I'm uh, more focused on trying to get my Spitfires in my British hangar. Now the Spitfire was an incredible plane during the Battle for Britain and whilst the Hawker Hurricanes were actually more common and more widely used the Spitfire was probably known as one of the most effective planes during the Battle for Britain despite the fact that it only carried en enough fuel to be in the air for 30 minutes at a time and didn't really carry a very large ammunition complement, only 2800 rounds I believe. But when you're only in the air for 30 minutes at a time, 2800 rounds should more than last as long as you're not firing like a a trigger happy noob firing nice short sharp controlled bursts not that that matters too much in the the arcade mode as you do get unlimited ammunition there but things like historical battles and well I'd assume full real battles when they're available uh, it will uh, be quite a factor having to monitor fuel and ammunition usage. So let's jump into the queue and see if we can get a game going here, shall we? Now I am significantly more impressed with War Thunder over Wargaming's World of War planes. Uh, the main points but I mean World of Warplanes is 19 gigabytes in size and as anyone who plays World of Tanks or World of Warplanes already would probably know for some reason Wargaming do not build their games for multi-core support which is ridiculously bizarre given today's day and age and technology and such but they, they for some reason chose not to build their games with multi-core support War Thunder is only 6 gigabytes which when you consider how things look I mean I have the majority of my settings here on high and I'm running this on a four year old machine and I can run comfortably including fraps which kinda drains your frame rate and I'm 
getting a steady 20 frames a second. But, yeah, uh, aside from the, the hard drive space required, uh, like I say, this is graphically more appealing and much larger maps. Uh, it's a hell of a lot more historically accurate, e even in the arcade mode, it's far more historically accurate than World of Tanks or World of Warplanes. which is just astounding how they've managed to pack so much into such a small installer is uh, a little surprising to be quite honest I mean not, not only do we already have the option of uh, arcade battles and historical battles but there is also uh, a single player dynamic campaign where you can attempt to change the course of history in some very notable World War II battles Battle for Britain, Battle for Stalingrad uh, there's a few others featured, I can't remember them off the top of my head but there is quite an extensive list uh, I'm not sure whether single player campaigns are available in the offline mode. I haven't checked that. Oh, great. I've just been rammed. There goes my wing. There's a crash. Long live the Spitfire. Oh well. Onto my uh, Hurricane Mark II. I have this kitted out with uh, machine guns and rockets. Just in case I need to come across any ground targets that require disposal. Admittedly, though, uh, I'm, I mean, the tech tree is rather extensive already for the majority of the nations in War Thunder but I'm more of a fighter type pilot rather than a, a bomber or an attacker I like to uh, get into the thick of the action and get some dogfighting going on which always makes for a, a far more entertaining video than just flying about at 15,000 feet and dropping bombs on people. I must say, the controls for War Thunder are incredibly easy to use. Oh the wing again and plant me into the side of a mountainside yeah as I was saying the the controls are incredibly easy to get the grasp of there's a, a very quick and easy tutorial on uh, how to get to grips with it and uh, it does support a variety of controllers I mean I'm using mouse and keyboard but it does support joysticks um, I believe it supports Xbox controllers uh, it also includes force feedback functions if you are using something like a joystick so you know, once you start firing or you hit turbulence or you take fire from an enemy you are going to feel that in your controls which helps to add to the sense of realism and it's almost as though they've set this game up to be 
a good combination of those who like your fun arcadey type games and those who like actual proper flight combat sim type games which is very nice and very well done oh damn I thought I'd managed to get over the top of him then Got a thing about losing my wings today. Take the Bew Fighter out. But, yes, uh, if I was going to recommend an aerial combat free to play game. I would definitely have to go with War Thunder over World of Warplanes. I know World of Warplanes is uh, still in closed beta, but War Thunder is just so much better in so many different ways. Wargaming are going to have one hell of a job to compete with this, especially as, from what I hear, War Thunder are basically going to be the main competition for Wargaming and are eventually going to expand into uh, ground units and naval units as well. Uh, they will allow for up to 50 tanks per battle. Uh, I'm not sure on the the warships, but I'm sure as it gets closer to the time we will receive more information on that. Oh, damn. Just shot down a friendly. That was unfortunate. We won the game, though. <coughs> Only one shot down for three deaths. Not so brilliant. great cash or XP especially after paying out for the uh, the friendly fire there but yeah as you can see you've got tabs here for your army and fleet so uh, eventually they are going to expand into the ground units and the naval units And I, I just think there's so much more potential for this. Uh, if Wargaming really hope to compete, they, they're going to have to stop focusing on this absurd principle of releasing new content, you know, putting new planes and new tanks and what have you into their games and they actually need to focus on fixing the bugs and the glitches and for God's sake they need to change to a game engine that has multi-core support in a day and age where you've got quad cores, you know, octa cores you cannot have a game that will only run on one core that's it's just ridiculous it just doesn't work I mean like I say my machine currently is four years old and only has uh, a 2.33 megahertz dual core processor and I can run War Thunder on high graphical settings with fraps running as well and maintain a fairly good frame rate whilst I'm recording and fraps as people know tends to eat a lot of your uh, FPS 
So, yes, definitely much more impressive. And I am definitely going to be spending a lot more time on this game. I mean, I've seen a few other casters, uh, the likes of the Mighty Jingles, and who else is there? Side Strafe as well. Both play this game, and it just felt like it was about time I got into it. So, here it is. Episode 1 of the new series for the channel. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button, show some love. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go and do that. Like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'll also post links in the description for uh, Eggy's channel, Side Strafe's channel and The Mighty Jingles if you feel like you want to go and check those guys out which I would highly recommend they're all great guys and all produce some very top quality videos which are good for many many hours of entertainment but I think this will be it for video number one of War Thunder and thank you very much everyone for watching Catch you all on the next one.